Hello and welcome to a new Scale 500 news video here on the channel. I recently attended the Amsterdam Aviation Collectors Fair and I had a blast of a time. And apart from finding and seeing a lot of really interesting and cool models, I did also have the chance to talk with some of the perhaps most interesting people in the scale business at the moment. One of them being the Harper Wings product manager himself, Stefan Kürgen. Now, a quick disclaimer before we jump into the interview. I did not know that Harper would be attending the AMS because they had not communicated about it. And for sure, I have many burning questions for the product manager of Harper Wings, and I'm sure you do as well. But when you do such an interview, especially when it's more critical questions, it's only fair that the interview partner has a chance to prepare himself for such an interview. Now, given that I did not know that they would be there, there was no reason for me to contact them in advance to see if we could make an interview. Stefan Kürgen was so kind to agree to an interview anyways, but it just means that, of course, I had to limit my hard-hitting questions somewhat because it has to be fair. But it does not mean that we won't be asking these questions in the future because I am in touch with them and I am trying to figure out if we can do something in the future. But for now, let's just jump into this interview because there were some quite interesting answers anyways. So I know there's a lot of questions coming from the community regarding GSE and accessories. And um, in some live streams, you've often talked about that you have um, another company providing parts for you and it's always a challenge to get that produced. But what I was wondering is, um, is HAPA also looking into alternative ways of producing it? I'm especially thinking here when I look at, uh, for example, eBay. I find a lot of people that start making GSE in Scale 500 where they're using 3D printers and stuff like that. So what's the process there with HAPA in maybe also finding new ways of producing uh, accessories and, and GSE that could maybe also have a faster production time? Well, we, um, first of all, we try, well, thank, th first of all, thanks for stopping by. I mean, that's uh, very nice of you. And um, it's actually my first time here, so it's uh, very interesting. has not been exciting days for me, a lot of talking and, a lot of, and seeing a lot of interest. Um, about, the, about the accessories, well, we've, um, it's, it's two or threefold, actually. I mean, we're trying to, to pick up this, the items that are not available, trying to get that back available. Um, some new items in the past that came out the past one or two years, actually we have been uh, moving a few things back to Germany, developing some accessory parts also in Germany with our, with our fact, traditional factory in Dietenhofen near Nuremberg. Um, and we have been looking into 3D um, printing and have, I uh, don't want to say too much, but we have, uh, um, have some, some, some small little prototype ideas that we've made. The thing is still, as, as soon as you want to have something printed, on the 3D surface, that's really difficult. If you want mainly blank parts uh, that don't have a lot of decoration on it, that's fairly simple, It's but it's fairly expensive still. Um, but things are getting better, so we're still looking at that. But as soon as you really want something with, with, with a detailed uh, decoration on it, printing, what, what people are used to having, even, even the, with the tiny parts, that's a bit, um, still a bit difficult on the 3D printing side. Thank you so much. Um, I had an Instagram story yesterday where I asked the community if they had like one question, if they could ask the helper manager to get some inspiration. And um, I think one topic that, that kind of comes quite often is um, what liveries are chosen when you make new models. Um, my perception, it might be wrong, but my perception is that you often start with special liveries before moving to a standard livery when you feature a new airline. And at least from my experience, I think many would perhaps wish it the other way around. But I know you don't always have a f totally free hand on what you want to do when in deciding what models to do. Airlines have their say as well. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe let us a little bit know about the process, how you decide what airline, when you feature a new airline, what livery to start with, standard livery versus special livery? Um, it's not an easy question, but we had it yesterday, a, a, a quite, a, quite a neat discussion where I was at all of a sudden just, just standing on the, on the sides and we had, I had two customers here uh, discussing it because one really wanted the, the standard livery first and the other said, well, no, I want the, you know, I want the special stuff. And, uh, 
So I let them have the talk and discuss it a little bit, discuss a little bit. Um, it's, it's not an easy answer because there are a lot of factors that go into it. As you said, the airlines um, themselves have a say if there's a special event they want to promote or something, or uh, if, if, it's a, if it's a soccer World Cup, you know, you have to do that first, of course, then uh, suddenly that event is gone, of course, it's history. Um, I actually personally only through you know feedback from 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 collectors actually found out that we do prioritize special deliveries first because it really wasn't that obvious for, for me personally mm -hmm. I have to say um, we just um, sometimes think that you know and um, it, it it depends a little bit on the airline, actually. If it's if if people like to have a special delivery more or or, or want the standard delivery, um, I, w I would um, in the future I'll, I'll try to get a bit of a mix out of it. Um, of course, it depends on what the airline wants. If they want, if they some some really demand us to say, well, not demand, but they you know request us friendly to uh, um, produce you know the special delivery, we would do this first or that first. Um, but I'll try to, you know, look a little bit, a little bit more that we have a little mix. Maybe, perhaps, still do the special delivery first, but then really not miss out on doing the standard delivery as well. I mean, it's never easy. To, yeah, it's never easy to, you know, make everyone happy. That's that's obvious. Yeah, um, I think if I could have a little input there, I think what could be nice is, for example, it's fair enough to do the special deliveries first, but. Um, and I know you can't always say everything in advance, but if collectors know that you're, for example, okay, we have in mind to have within the next six months or something like that to have a special, uh, a, uh, um, a standard delivery as well, then and I think customers might be more inclined to you figure out if they want to have both, or if they want to have want to wait for one of the or the other, and that's that's maybe a little bit easier for collectors then, but. I know, again, it's not easy to make everyone happy. Right, right. I mean, maybe that's something, I mean, we've been working a little bit out, you know, when we have the new releases packages announced, that uh, currently I do, um, you know, some some on, on, on YouTube a little bit, you know, talking a little bit uh, about some releases. Um, and I've started at least, you know, with some items, you know, saying, okay, this and that will come, or, you know, uh, if, we, if we announce first the 200 scale version, and, you know, just saying, okay, please, you know, Realize there's going to be a lot of demand for the 500 scale as well. That will also be coming. You know these kind of things. Maybe I can do a little bit more on that side. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think that could be nice. Um, since we're already talking a little bit about the deciding process of what models to do, uh, could you maybe tell us a little bit more about, um, for example, how much the sales statistics? playing a role in deciding what models to create. For example, I know in, in live streams you had a lot of requests for African carriers and you then said, but they don't sell that very well, so we have to be a little bit careful. On the other side, we see, for example, Oceania region or South Africa being very underserved with, with new models. Um, so how, how much do sales statistics play a role when you create new models and how much do you also sometimes maybe jump into the deep water and just take a risk? Um, well, it's. I mean, of course, um, we're, we're a company. We have to survive, and uh, we have to pay our bills. <laughs> and um, so it's. It is a mix. I mean, I'd, I'd say, of course, we look. We know what what works. Um, I, I definitely uh, don't want to say anything negative about an important German airline, but I personally uh, would love to do more other models. But you know, if if, if people love their Lufthansa and people and, and Lufthansa is a great company, obviously you want uh, you want to um, and, the, and the demand is there will try to fulfill that demand, of course. Um, but, um, and we also had this topic just this morning also, it is, it is also important to, to build in now and then a few things that, that really the hard, uh, let's say, core of the collectors that they're interested in, you know, just to keep the collection alive, keep it, you know, vivid, um, not just having the standard um, um, European white items, Euro-wide items there in their, in their collection, in their cabinet, but just reaching out a little bit to do a few things. And um, the demand, we, we've, we've seen that in the past also a couple of times, specifically about African airlines. There is demand for it, but it's really much, much lower. The actual sales are, are, are considerably lower than for, uh, let's say, a European airline or a U.S. airline. Um, with specifically with, with South Africa, it was a bit of a you know South African Airways had, was was in quite some trouble there for a time, and uh, brand new people are coming in, and so we are trying to reestablish contact there, and with some a few other airlines also um, have some contacts. Let's see how it develops. We had some good contacts with airlines that 
were, were pretty uh, developing pretty nicely, all of a sudden went a little bit out of business. Um, so yeah, we, we, try to, we try to do a mix, but obviously, of course, we, uh, I'd say two thirds is really based on, on actually sales statistics, and uh, a third is trying just to do something special. Um, either it's a certain t airplane type that's not very, very uh, popular or not so, not so used many times or can't be seen, or an airline that just has a, you know, just, just a beautiful livery, but that might not be that well known in the world. Fair enough. Um, but I have to give you at least one little bit tough question. Um, I mean, models, they're often great. Sometimes mistake happens. That can happen to all of us. I have made mistakes in my videos. We all do that. Um, but I'd be interested in what's the process when Herpa releases a model afterwards. What happens afterwards when you, for example, then get the feedback from the community? I'm here very specifically thinking, for example, of um, the 747 Cargo Lux retro livery, where, well, you may use the wrong mold, the wrong aircraft type. I know it's, it's, it's maybe the, the harshest um, example, but it happened. But what is the process afterwards? What is happen when, when, when you get the feedback and you say, okay, we didn't get that right? Shit happens. But what, what do you do afterwards? What, what is the process? Well, we, uh, we see if we can rectify it. I mean, and there's some cases, and uh, I'm not going to say which, which cases they are, but where we see, okay, something, okay, this is not right, we cannot uh, deliver this model, we cannot, we cannot distribute this model, then we um, try to rectify it as best as we can. In some cases, we actually uh, produce from scratch. Um, did that maybe in the past two, three years, maybe three or four times, where we said, okay, no, this is just, just, not, just not feasible, not possible to deliver this. Um, and of course, for example, if the cargo looks, we go back and say, okay, wh what happened? You know, where did it happen? Um, up to what step was everything correct? When did, when did things start to, you know, somehow sneak in there with the, with the, with the, uh, with the, with the upper deck? Um, and then we see if, if, we, if we can do something about it or not. I mean, in some cases, we really realize only afterwards because um, when we get the model into the, into the company, we look, first of all, is everything you know on the model? Do we have all the tires on there? Is the, is the livery correct? Is is anything damaged with the delivery with the shipment? And do do a random um, check on that, and then it goes out. In the in the Carlux version, we've only afterwards really found out. You know, there's an oops. Uh, there's something not that right on it, not that correct on it. Um, and then it's really a decision where we say, okay, we we we, we can apologize and um, then simply ask our collectors to decide with their, with their wallets, pretty much, and say, okay, uh, you want to keep it? If you're not satisfied, just please give it back. I mean, that, in that case, that was the only thing we could do. Um, we might go back in the future and do it, but right now we have so much, uh, the capacity is just, just overly full. We cannot right now go back, we, we could not say, okay, we'll do it in the next couple of months, we'll do a new, new rerun of this, and maybe also Carlux would not want to have a rerun, so we don't know about that. Um, so it's um, very aggravating, also very frustrating for us that this happens, um, but um, there, are, there are a few things that we can do in the background that thankfully nobody really realizes. Um, where we can correct a few things before. Because that's the advantage also of having our own factory in Germany, where we can say if there's a, uh, all of a sudden, uh, if there's a print missing or something, we can rectify that also locally. So that's something that we can still, that we're lucky to do, yeah. All right. Um, two last questions, a little bit easier, I think. Uh, but thank you very much for also taking the tough questions. Um, what does it mean for Happer to take part in an affair like the AMS? Um, and to connect with the community? Well, for me, it's personally the first time here, and uh, I think it's cool. I mean, we don't, we don't sell anything here. Um, we're doing promotion. Um, we're here just to answer questions, and I know that tonight I'm going to have a sore throat. Uh, but, it, but that's cool. I mean, I like that a lot, and it's just really to get all this feedback. We have uh, people coming in here. They say, oh, wow, Herpa's here, and then they have to um, ask a few questions, then they leave, and then they come back again and ask a few questions. So it's pretty, we're not selling here. So we're just really here to, I'm really here to answer questions, show a few things that we've not announced. Yeah, so there might be something interesting in the, uh, in the cabinet behind me here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to jump in there because... Uh, I'm, I'm going to press you a little bit. 
if you can maybe hint on something coming up in the future that you haven't announced yet, a little bird has tweeted me, maybe Atlas Air around the corner? Yeah, well, it has, let's say it this way, it has an Atlas Air tail. Um, and there might be something differently written on the fuselage of that 747. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something um, we finally um, came to an agreement also with that spe specific uh, company, uh, which is pretty cool, which is pretty nice. Um, and, um, well, behind me, actually, we, I mean, everybody's probably, you know, awaited it, expected it from us. The Emirates A380 in the brand new color will also do the 777, of course. Um, so, you know, and every, and as soon as, as new types come in and, and new sizes, whatever, uh, from, from Emirates, we'll do that as well. Um, Virgin Atlantic uh, is something that after, I believe, 20 years, we can finally do again. And very, very cool. Yeah, I think so too, actually. I'm glad to hear it. And, um, and the A330, A330 Neo is only the start, hopefully. So we'll be getting to a lot of different Virgin models in the future. So once more, thank you very much, Stefan Kögen, for being willing to, well, join this rather spontaneous interview. And I think there were some really interesting answers. But uh, let's just uh, go a little bit more into this Atlas Air model that he mentioned, because I can tell you exactly which model that will be. It is, of course, the 7478F, where it has the Atlas Air tail. And at the front of the aircraft, you'll then have the Kühne and Nagel writing, which is a German logistics company. And I believe this is the last 747 ever to be produced. So I think a pretty cool aircraft model and lovely that Herpa managed to get the licenses for that. Another news that I got off camera is the fact that in the 11-12 release batch of Harper Wings, there will be an Austrian Airlines model included. Now, we don't know yet which one. Personally, I do hope for the A320, but we will see. Originally, it was actually not intended to be released this year. They wanted to release the Austrian Airlines model next year, but for whatever reason, they shoveled around the production plans and now it's ended up in the 11-12 release batch. So what model do you think the Austrian Airlines will be? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, what else do you think about the answers from the product manager of Harper Wings? Also that, let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this type of content, you're always welcome to hit that like button. And of course, if you're new around here and don't want to miss out on content like this in the future, then be sure to hit subscribe. With that, thank you so much for watching and see you in another video here on the channel.